I'm going to set a timer here. Oh, no need. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, who's fancy? Stand up diet's fancy. Stand up diet is fancy. So fancy. I wonder if anybody watches it in the YouTube video. They're well, like, they wouldn't know why we're so fancy unless they did. But yeah. I have so an they hourglass. Can't, they can't see it. I have a really fancy hourglass. <laughs> I guess if you, if you are watching, you can't see it. I have a fancy hourglass. <laughs> it's really fancy. Uh, some kid in an hourglass factory made that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, With love and 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 uh, and attention, because he knew someday the Dr. Brady Smith it would Camus have an Washington. owner who loved it so much. <laughs> yeah. Would just be like. And flip. <laughs> uh, we're in studio today with a very funny Portland comic, Brady. So funny. I I'm mean, actually super excited to meet you. Oh, thank like, you. Like legitimately, like, thank like so I much. have enjoyed uh, your your unprotected sets on Epics. Is that the name of the yeah. station? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are in uh, studio with Mohanad El Shiki. Oh yeah, tell us. That's use that's, his name. Uh, that's me. Yeah, that's you. I uh, yeah, that's unprotected sets. Sets. People were saying S E T S. I yeah. think they they designed that to be a little bit of a yeah. a little bit of a Freudian <laughs> slip. It is Maybe? surprising, even though that the show doesn't air in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Your girlfriend's parents were like, "What was he on?" <laughs> it says sets. It's a pun. <laughs> it's a you pun, know, mom. Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you hate it. You're like, I hate, I hate it. it so much. <laughs> but they, they paid me enough to be like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's absolutely, it's super. wonderful." Oh, you mean like sets? Like, oh, that other thing. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to do some of my skits on your sets <laughs> show? <laughs> <laughs> when people after shows will be like, oh, you should put this in your skit. I'm like, it's not a skit. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've also, you were in the finals of Portland's Funniest Person at Helium last two yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, I Way was. to almost win two years in a row. <laughs> yeah, three, uh, third and second, and then next year I'm just uh, not going to do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> we should all just go on strike and be like, but we're all oh. funny and we all want a trophy. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm we'll call it a millennial win. Sorry, millennial listeners. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you know why I found out I'm a, I'm a millennial? Yeah. Just on the cusp. And it upset me. Gen X sounds so much cool, cooler, yeah. so I'm glad that but I'm like a Gen that, I'm an 80, 1981 birthday, and that's a millennial. Yeah. I learned. So. Welcome. I'm with you guys, I guess. I am the yeah. old lady in the room. Begrudgingly. I'm a, uh, yeah, Gen X just sounds hardcore. Yeah, like, you're, I'm Yeah, Gen you're out of the loop. You're out of the, uh, you're a Gen X. Yeah. I'm, okay. yeah. I'm the old lady in the room. Yeah. What year were you born? Uh, 91. So I'm definitely a millennial. Yeah, we're 12 years. Yeah, and then Randy's like nine. I don't know. I'm It'll... older than Mo. Are you? Yeah, I'm 29. Oh, sorry, we're 10 years apart. Yeah. I'm 25. Uh, can I, can I um, tell you, Mo Mohanad, uh, do you go by Mo? Uh, Mohanad. Mo Mohanad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have one of, um, uh, and I don't take this lightly, you have one of the funniest jokes that I have ever heard. Oh, thank you, man. And I it's love your, that when I'm another comic in the room. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny, too. I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> i got to give her a little bit of validation when I do this. But um, your joke about the, uh, the the One Direction, the boy band joke. Oh, it is, yeah. Will you, will you kind of paraphrase that for us a little bit so for the listeners who have never me, who never heard that joke? Oh, uh, well, I mean, the joke the joke starts with me uh, talking about how much uh, I, I hate boy bands. Right. Right. Uh, and then I named the three boy bands that I hate, which is uh, the Jonas Brothers, One Direction, and uh, ISIS. <laughs> right. uh, yes. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. the joke goes on, as in, uh, I know, I know, some of you guys are like, one of these groups is so different from the two others, and then <laughs> like. I, I know I'm not stupid because One Direction is not America's mistake. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. I laughed so hard when I heard that and I rewound it and then I made my wife watch the whole episode because I thought it was so funny. That and is funny. There's just some jokes that just get you, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that joke just got me and because I'm yeah, a big I, One Direction fan actually. Like actually... Oh legitimately like I'm in a band and I try to get my look, band to look on your face Mo <laughs> no, that's no, amazing no, the, the thing is the thing is like here's the thing I'm I'm just I'm just like I don't hate One Direction or the Jonas but like I don't even like listen to them like I have nothing but for the sake of that joke I had to right. use them yes and I'm just like like years from now like if if this was like 
if someone sees it on YouTube or like on TV or something and I have to be like, I don't hate you guys. Because your first big gig will be like One Direction's opening for you and they're going to be like, this guy. <laughs> exactly. A-hole. Exactly, yeah. Talking crap about us. Right? Yeah, we don't Jeez. like Libyan comedy. <laughs> You're like, but it's great. Yeah. Um, what is there music that you... I, I have a, a genre of music I hate. Let's not make it a racist thing. There is one genre. I hate mariachi music. It gives me anxiety is the oh. other reason. It's going so fast that I feel like there should be uh, cartoon characters running in and out of like hotel room doors like when we were yeah. kids. It's just too much for me. Is there music, any music that you guys hate? Oh. Like that where you're like, when you hear it, you're just no, like, I Mar- can't. I actually, so I lived in Paraguay and they have a very kind of mariachi-like type of music called cachaca, which is very much, you cool would listen name. to it, it's like. It's like if uh, pop culture could get their hands on mariachi music. It's beautiful, and I love it. Why but most, like people, most people would not like it, but I listen to it all the time when I lived there, and so I love it. It's the like sharpness and the speed of mariachi no, music. Yeah. I that's love just... that you compared mariachi music to Benny Hill, by the way. Yeah, but no, that's it's fantastic. that same speed, though. It's no, that same like uh, anxiety yeah. feeling. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the same about, like, I don't know... Uh... Uh, dubstep and whatever like I oh just, yeah uh, yeah like Trap anything music. that they exactly yeah, yeah. I'm like i'm like i just i'm like i'm like i'm not doing it to be like oh i hate that music yeah it's it, just grinding yeah. i don't hate it it's just exactly. like i prefer not to hear there's it. a mood for every music for me like i can yeah. go metal i can go country i can go death metal can you do some like, i can do scream and death metal in small doses certainly not like a whole like pantera record have you ever been in a mosh pit brady Oh, God. Uh, not at a concert of someone that you would uh, associate <laughs> with a mosh pit. That's even better. I believe there was, was a mosh Pat pit Benatar? of sort. No, I went and saw <laughs> Counting Crows in like 1997. I love Counting Crows. You can say what you want. Listen. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I'm not They're making fun great. of you for Counting yeah. Crows. I'm making fun of the fact that there was a mosh pit at a Counting Crows yeah. concert. It got, it got a little crazy uh, down in front. And I was, was there. Was it She Talks to Angels? I hope it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, no, it was Mr. Jones got a little rowdy and, uh, and uh, things had to get calmed down a little I bit. That. But the, the, one of the girls that I was with fell down. And oh, I was thinking black crows. I just didn't Counting s- crows. Like, way did, like even oh, yeah. more. Go. Yeah, way even. Yeah, yeah, I have a sad is. Counting Crows story. I saw them, I saw Maroon 5 open for them. Oh. At an outdoor place, and that's interesting. Maroon Five, judge me, judge me if you will. I like them, and I don't care. Oh, and I he's that. hot, and he can dance. Um, they Agreed. did amazing, standing ovation. Counting Crows comes on, doesn't play any of their hits, and after every song, a drove of like twenty people would leave. Yeah. And at the end, I would say there was maybe two hundred people there, like at a concert. Yeah, and like just people that's just so leaving. Weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why would oh, you do uh, that? Counting Crows has that song, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Round here. And round here. Round here. I the love whole here. August and Everything After album I had memorized, still yeah. do probably. And uh, it's wonderful. And uh, But that was my only experience with the mosh pit. Yeah. So not. Been in a mosh pit? Mom? Never. Never? Yeah. Do you have desires yeah. to be in a mosh pit? No. Oh my God. <laughs> that seems <laughs> terrible. It's just like the, the idea of just like. No, I like I hate being around people in general. Like, yes. and, like sweaty guys yes. touching exactly, you yeah. and rubbing Big their body against people. you. Like I would, if I'm in a mosh pit, I would just like be punching people, just yelling. Like, <laughs> no, leave me alone. <laughs> You're the only one with mace in a mosh yeah. pit. <laughs> Fuck this. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Do not touch me. <laughs> what are you doing? I paid to be here, not to be touched. I want to talk to a manager. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, I haven't watched Unprotected Sets yet. I will. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I will watch yeah. it eventually. It, yeah. I had to buy it. Like, I didn't. I don't have the channel in my cable package, so it cost me like $6 to buy it, but I have enough. We've had enough guests who have been uh, featured on unprotected sets yeah. that I wanted yeah. to see it because yeah, yeah. Becky Bronstein's on there Jessa Reed Shane Moss have all been on there as well yeah and uh, Adam Reed <laughs> have not guest. been on it thank you yeah. listeners and out yeah. there <laughs> not it's better okay. you have a cool podcast and I that's do way, that's I get to hang better. out with yeah, a you get God. to talk about it I yeah. get to you know like way better I get to hang out with a gosh darn doctor yeah um, that's right speaking of, speaking of my job uh, Mohanad I really like to so from time to time I get a lot of um uh, patients. So I'm a dentist yeah, yeah. from uh, foreign countries, yeah. and I love to talk about uh, dentistry and learn about what dentistry is like in foreign countries. So yeah. you're from Libya, yeah. That's that's where I'm. From, and I'd yeah. like to know 
what dentistry is like in Libya? Like specifically, is it customary to get a cleaning twice a year or is it like a dentist more like a, this is an emergency service for when things hurt? I feel like that's how most people treat it. Yeah. In Libya. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, if things go really bad, then people like would be like, I need to go to the dentist. Yeah. Like no one says, it's mostly like, uh, I need to go there, not that I just should. booked in a, like I should. Yeah, there's no should. It's more, more like, oh, I have to go now or I'll die. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, that kind yes. of thing. Yeah. That's, the, that's usually the way tooth pain comes on. Uh, are there lots of dentists in Libya? Was it, would it be easy to find a dentist in Libya? Oh, yeah. And if you walked into a dentist, you've been to a dentist in Libya. Yeah. Of, yeah. Okay. So um, was that a scary experience? Have you been to a dentist in the U.S.? Could you compare those um, experiences? I've been once. Uh, I think, I, well, I think, because I, I used to go to one dentist in Libya, which was like, uh, he was like a, a really young dude, just like, I don't know, I don't know if he how old he was, but he was just like kind of like not that older than me, so it was like very <laughs> kind of like easier to uh, like you were fourteen and he was fifteen. Exactly, yeah, Got exactly, it. Got yeah. It. Compared to like compared like if I go to uh, like a, a a doctor like for anything else, it's usually like someone who's like. 30, 40 years older than me, whatever. Yeah, I want them uh, yeah. to be, like, old and, like, feel like they've done this a thousand times. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly, but... Or, you, like, 37 is, like, a really good age, probably. Yeah, yeah, but when you're younger, when you're a kid, like, you're like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. you look like you still like cartoons, too. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it is funny, yeah. Even if someone has, like, been doing it for 10 years, I mean, like, hmm, <laughs> did you learn everything? Right? Uh, Shoot, I've been about out 10 years. I feel yeah, pretty, I feel pretty solid with my skills. Yeah, you, I, no. you haven't hurt me yet. We'll True. see. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, you stabbed <laughs> I mean, me in the mouth with I needles. I haven't permanently hurt you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It always turned out okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. for the greater good. Let's just say. That's funny. Yeah. No, okay. but yeah, but I think I think now uh, nowadays people like w- go more. There's like more of that culture of just like going to the dentist yeah. because you should. Uh, and I don't know why is that. I, I think it's. I think I think is the reason is just like the internet, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, yeah. Sure. Like, because uh, like people didn't have like a, like I would say like a stable internet connection in Libya. Like would like everyone had access to until maybe like two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, mm. where people like really like ha- had it at their homes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so once that happened, like a lot of stuff started to change, just like through social media. Like people just like kind of like started like learning about like more about like like i don't like it's modernization just, exactly yeah exactly which word is, got there <laughs> and, and it's funny because like it just happened so fast yeah because like the minute like there was like social media people were just like oh this that so there was like a lot of changes and i think that was like yeah. one of them people just going to the dentist because they should instead of just like they need to um yeah. Which is funny because like my like my dad still like would only go if he need like needs to. <laughs> so and that exists yeah. in the United States too. Yeah. There's de- I mean I can tell yeah. you there is yeah. a uh, a large part of the population that only goes if they feel like they're going to die yeah. if they do not. And that's when I get to see them. I have people who will go to an ER like okay. three you know three or four times before they're like finally like oh, okay I'll go to the dentist. People try to pull their own teeth out. Uh, they go to YouTube. I've seen that done in front of me There's YouTube before. videos oh where you God. can like watch yeah. people uh, uh, agonize through like pulling their own teeth. So it's crazy. Yeah. And I'm always like, you know, I'm open Mm-mm. 12 hours a day. Just take care of this. Just really come easy. on in. But it's money. Yeah. People don't have money. It's money well, and fear is yeah. a lot of it too. Yeah. And Financial fear and pain fear. All those fears. Yeah, all of it. Which yeah. doesn't stop them from like pulling their I think, own teeth I think, out. Yeah, I feel like, me. yeah, financial fear would make more sense to me. Because like pain <laughs> fear, I'm like taking your own tooth out. That's got to be way more painful terrible. than like. Terrible. And it's a terrible idea. They have yeah. the ability to give you stuff so it doesn't hurt is always my thought. Like you're scared of the dentist hurting, yeah. but he, they're going to give you m- medicine to make exactly. that not hurt. Right. Like, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I've insane. seen them like have to put shoulder weight into pulling a cat's tooth out before when I was a vet tech. I can't imagine trying to pull my own tooth out, but I saw a guy do it one time at a like uh, at a house I was hanging out with. I, you know, I have, I have probably <laughs> had hundreds of patients who have come to me in the aftermath of trying to do it, and then they mess it up, and then I have a much harder job. I think it's from watching gangster movies from like the 80s and uh, 90s. It is difficult to pull a tooth out. Yeah, but they'll always show like yeah. some guy being like, all right, we want to know who your boss is. And then he has some like needle nose pliers, and he's like, right. pulls a tooth out, and it comes out all perfect and clean. Yeah. And that 
very rarely happens. Yeah. Like, so well, gotta, to be fair, a mafia, uh, a mafioso type might have some experience. They might do that quite frequently. And it, and it took him forever doing. to perfect it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has a few thousand teeth under his belt. I'm He's sure. He's like, I got this one without breaking, you guys. <laughs> he, wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't do it unless he was qualified. Yeah, exactly. He's right? like, exactly, I really, yeah. Oh, right. I can't afford to go to the dentist. Well, my cousin Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask why he knows how to do it. Don't yeah. ask no questions. Right. He got it. Yeah, he got it. That's He'll right. do it. You're like, huh, that didn't hurt that bad. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Tony's appreciate you um, sharing that with me. Uh, the closest, I started thinking like through my patients. I've had a patient from Tunisia, yeah, which well, is that, North yeah, Africa. That's very close. And that's yeah. the closest I've got. Never, yeah. I don't think I've ever had a Libya, a Libyan yeah. patient before. Are you trying to coax somebody to come into the clinic? <laughs> like, I would love it. I would love it. I need, I need, a, like, Let me get I need in to there. check a box. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, I just saw you look at his mouth while he was laughing. <laughs> he really let me in there. We could do, we could do some stuff. Yeah. It'd be fun, man. Um, yeah. I was going to ask something. I forgot. Go ahead. Keep talking. Do you want to go into This Week in Dentistry? We have a segment called This Week in Dentistry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Share, tell us. I've been dying to hear a, this story. Where I share a, a story about what's going on This Week in Dentistry. Yeah. This Week in Dentistry, I had a, um, uh, a man that I was removing about 12 teeth on, and uh, his wife decided to sit on his lap during the procedure. So when you said, because so, so he, I haven't heard this full story yet, he had given us a little snippet of this. Yeah. When yeah. you say, is she side saddle? Or is she okay. straddling? Let's go back here. So he's a little nervous mm-hmm. about getting his teeth pulled out, and his leg starts to shake. Like, and he starts to like, uh, like a nervous twitch. Like he like, yeah, your leg moves shaking. his right leg, and so his right leg's moving. And I had to ask him, you stop that because your head moves yeah. when your leg moves. Everything's yeah. attached, and the whole chair moves. Yeah. And then my job's harder because it's moving. So I said, I gotta ask you to stop moving your leg if you can. If you can, I'll try to work around it. And I was really nice about it. And then he motioned for his wife to come and sit on his leg stop his leg from moving but like a cartoon like looney tunes she sat on his right leg <laughs> and his left leg starts doing it and then i'm like this is seems deliberate yeah you know like it's really weird yeah and then the problem was then when she's sitting on his lap she has a very direct view of what i'm doing and so she's she sitting on him like like uh like side saddle side like saddle. you okay. said yeah. side saddle okay. and only on his right leg so his left leg was still free and moving and um, and he eventually kind of got that under control, but he was super nervous, and I kind of just wanted to finish. It was towards the end of the day, and yeah. so I was just like, I'm just going to muscle through this and get this guy taken care of. Get it done. And it was a very difficult case because the 12 teeth were in, like, all different quadrants of his mouth, so he was, he was I had to numb him up, like, totally numb him up. Like, way more for even, like, like wisdom teeth cases, yeah. I used less anesthetic. Oh, wow. Because he had, like, all the wisdom teeth, Plus, like eight more teeth in various yeah. locations. So it's just like shot here, shot here, shot here, shot there. So he went through the ringer, admittedly. Wow. But then she started like uh, commentating on the procedure, <laughs> like, oh, like nice. play by play. Mm-hmm. She literally said that this is exactly what she said. She said, she said, oh no, honey, he's going after the one that's broken off at the gum line. This is probably going to hurt. That's exactly verbatim what she said. And so, I, and so I stopped. And I said, why would you say that? <laughs> and then I, I took the tooth out and didn't hurt because I'm good, good at and, I would, I would, and I've numbed him properly. And she has no basis on which to say, like, this is probably going to hurt. Um, but I, said, I literally said, why would you say that? And my assistant was like, oh, don't say that. <laughs> She's like, Brady, shut up. And she's like, oh. <laughs> oh, the assistant <laughs> was saying it to her, too. So she said it to her, too. And then she was like, oh. And then she's like, and then she's like, Oh man, you're really struggling with it. And like she would say these comments, oh and I was like, gosh. and I was like, oh, this is really difficult. That's like if you cut your face and you can't see it, and people are like, oh man, it's bad. It's yeah. <laughs> real bad. Oh I've God. had I've had children sit on like parents' laps before to like do the children's exams, or like the mom just doesn't kid won't sit still, so the but I'll, and I'll do like do a cleaning. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I've had an adult sit on another adult's lap, <laughs> and, like a very difficult yeah, procedure, and then yeah. just like. Just like real world it up, being like, oh, yeah. this is terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> you better yeah. hold on. It was such a wild, uh, such a wild I appointment hope she doesn't experience. have kids. Like, can you imagine no, being she like, had, oh she had two God. there. Yeah. Oh. And they were quite rowdy and running around. She's like, good night, kids. There's probably monsters in the closet, but you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that was my week in dentistry. Wow. That's crazy. Hey, uh, Mo, you uh, quit your job today. Yeah. I Congratulations. Did. Thank you so much. What job was that? 
Uh, I used to work at a at a tech company to just doing. Like used to work like three hours ago. Used to work. Was that like three hours ago? You used yeah, to work at a tech yeah, company. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that, like, that new, huh? Yeah, I uh, I quit today just to do do this full time now, uh, comedy. So hopefully it works out and I don't have to beg for my job back. Are you yeah. Are you nervous about that? Are you pretty? Oh, soft? I'm very nervous. Yeah, I did it last year, and yeah. then I got a good deal on a house, and I went back to work. But yeah, I did it for a year. I made it a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I've been saving up and stuff like that mm-hmm. just to like. That was my whole plan getting into this job because it, it's a good paying job. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to save as much as possible because I just can't yeah. uh, do customer service anymore. I just hate people. Yeah. So you are <laughs> a kind of behind the scenes kind of tech guy. You'd be fine. You'd yeah. be the guy that would be okay with being like, oh, nobody goes in there and talks to him. And you would exactly. be like, yeah, nobody yeah. comes in I here would love that. But just like having to talk to people all day. Mm. And it's just like, it's just like, like they're, questions are just so that's how yahoo was for me i worked for yahoo yeah. and i'd have people be like well i googled yahoo but i still can't find it where is it yeah and what's a browser yeah exactly well what i did is just like help people with the, with their websites so yeah. they just build their websites and like fix them and stuff like that and it's and it's always like how do i open a new tab i'm like what Pay somebody <laughs> to do this for you. Exactly. I'm like, no, you have to pay. I'm like, so should I go with green or red? I'm like, no, I don't do that for you. I'm not. I'm I'd not be like, I'm colorblind. I'm sorry. What does green and red look like? <laughs> <laughs> what are those exactly. colors? I think we can share yeah. that as a as a commonality that we. It's very difficult to uh, be kind and nice. Yeah. In the in the in the face of such stupidity. Yeah. And and it, also like I I can deal with stupidity, but like if you're like asking stupid question and then you're also then being you're mean yeah yep. i'm like that's I'm, the worst ex- I'm, I'm helping you here like what's up i call it squinting stupid it's when somebody's mm. so stupid that it makes you squint at them you're yeah, like exactly. you're kinda like what are you are you oh you're being serious oh i'm just like i'm trying <laughs> to help God, what are you doing right yeah. now yeah yeah exactly when exactly. i was at the credit card company people wished me to like get cancer and choke on chicken bones and die that was a very specific yeah. one so the nicest way when I hit my like fever pitch, like with a patient, my nice way of saying, um, we're done, we're done is, do you think that maybe another dentist would be better for you? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's my phrase. That's that I use. how I break up with guys. I'm like, <laughs> don't you think another girl right. might be better for you? Yes. Yeah, guy. I don't For some care. reason, I thought you tell guys, do you think another dentist will be good for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what a weird that's way. That's weird. That's to break up with them. Amanda lies on her tender and says yeah. that she's a dentist. I'm just like, whatever. Like, I was. Basically, a dentist. I was a vet tech. I mean, come on. There's no difference. Same thing. Yeah. There's no difference. I'm an apocalypse dentist. Perfect. <laughs> I do think that in an apocalypse, my skill, my trade will be uh, quite valuable. Our listeners are like, you're going down this road again. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will be recruited we into the most Becky's, elite gang. Becky's waiting for the apocalypse. Yeah. Are you pro apocalypse? Let's take all the like sadness out of it. Yeah. But if it goes down, are you in favor or not? Are you one of the do people you, that wants to die you, soon? Do you thrive in an apocalyptic world, or do you, or you like do you out? just like? Are you? I think if there's enough food, yeah, yeah, I would do, like if there is enough food, and then we just get to stay at home, and just like and be like, oh, we can't. You leave. go find mansions. That's the part I want to do. Exactly. That's the best yeah. part. D- then. I would definitely, I would definitely, I'll be like, yeah, I'm fine. As long as you give me food and I can just like go and like take stuff yeah. for free and whatever. Make your way down the keys. But like, my, my right. whole, my, my whole thing is like, if there's like some like strange power that kills people that go outside or something, I'm like, ah, I can't do that. Oh, uh, just be a prisoner to the house. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. ah, I can't. I don't want to be killed. No. I don't if like I could that. Be, if I could be in a mall. Yeah. Like that that new movie <laughs> that everyone talks about, Bird Box. I haven't seen it yet, but I saw you complaining about it. Yeah, it is a bad movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, tell us what you really think, Mon. It is, it is the worst. Quite terrible. Uh, <laughs> Give us your uh, best movie critic. Uh, like, Tell us quickly what it's about and your review on it. So it's it's there's some uh, evil power that if you look at it, it makes you want to kill yourself. Oh. And people like if you look at it, you will kill yourself. Is that, the power invisible? It, no one knows because they will never show you what the, those oh, people see before they die. Is it Wasn't a, this kind of like The Ring? Is it a Nickelback album? No, it's oh, not. is that what those they're looking poor at? Guys, they yeah. are terrible. They're not terrible. Oh, terrible. There's so many worse bands than Nickelback. We disagree. I Sorry, I digress. Go ahead, continue. That's I feel the like happening. Being bull- yeah, That's the M. happening. Night Shyamalan's The Happening. That is precisely what that movie is. Yeah. And The Ring. 
No, the ring is a video. Yeah, but it's still something they look at and they die. Yeah, but not like specifically makes yeah. you kill yourself. Yeah. That's well, the, the, thing, happening. the thing is like they will never tell you what it was that they saw because they died. So you never mm. know. And the people who survive haven't seen the thing because if they've seen the thing, they'll then just they die. die. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're always just walking around being like, and they just like watch it in like, a mirror. That's yeah. What do. <laughs> they had a great cast. Like if you see the cast, I'm like, this is. Like, how did they afford to get all of these people? Right. Who was in it? Uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra, yeah, Sandra Bullock was on it. Uh, oh, interesting. I've never heard of this. Maybe they had favors. Yeah, B.D. Wong was on it, too. Uh, there was so many people on it, and then Machine Gun Kelly for some reason. <laughs> uh, I like B.D. Wong. Nice. Yeah, I'm like, why are you on this movie? <laughs> we'll move on here in just a second, but I want to ask, are you a Black Mirror fan? I love Black Mirror. It's I love the best Black Mirror, too. Ever. Have you watched Black Mirror? I want to. I have not seen it. Skip the first episode. No, don't skip the. Oh wow. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Skip Black the first Mirror. Episode. Black Mirror. Okay, I thought you said Black Mare. No. Uh, Black like, Mirror. I don't know what that is. Mirror. But I thought that was uh, there was a show about a Black Mare. I'm thinking. Never mind. I'm thinking about something different. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about Black Mirror, which yeah. I have seen. And there's like it's hit and miss. It's definitely hit and miss. Well, that's the good thing about. I it. I think they you, came yeah. on too strong with that first episode, right? Yeah, that first episode. That was the pig yeah. one mm-hmm. yeah. with the I prime minister of United of the UK. Yeah. Especially because it happened. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. That was terrible. Like, that's just too far. It's yeah. too, it's too there was far. like two or three episodes that I thought were pretty decent. And then the rest, I watched like oh. five or six and I just lost interest really quick. I loved all of it. Every like, one of them. Yeah. Every single really, one of really them. Really, really. I mean, there were some that were like. Better than me, others. Like, made me like think about them like at least once a week after I. Like, like that episode where they. Uh, that. About that kid. You know that kid that. Uh, they see him watching something on his laptop. Yeah. Which, keep going. I don't remember which one is this. I've I seen him remember. watch this. Yeah. So they, they get a video of him uh, touching himself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then they yeah. threaten that to release it unless he goes and it, does And a bunch then he of goes stuff. on that whole adventure with the guy. Yeah, he robs a yeah. bank mm. and goes on that adventure with the guy. And at the very end, he's got to bring the money Wait, hold to. Hold on. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. He's got to bring the money to a, to a secret location. And yep. then the last thing is he has to fight the person he meets to the death. Yep. Nice. The thing is, like, the whole, the whole that episode, it's really you're good. rooting for the guy. And I mean, like, why are you doing this? Like, it's embarrassing, but who cares if they release right. the video? It's not that yeah. bad. Right. And then uh, the twist at the and end. Then you and then figure I, it out. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, everything is disgusting. Yeah, and I hate everything's so bad. Much. <laughs> it's really bad, yeah. and I hate it. Yeah. yeah. The one where you like rate people like Uber drivers. Yeah. And then if you get a poor rating, did you see this one, Brady? I don't think so. They so day to day interactions. We're at the store. You're rude to me. I lower your rating. Oh, you get a Yelp me. Yeah, and yeah. If but you like Yelp score, on everybody. If your score gets too low, you get kicked out of your house. Your credit goes bad. Oh, they can take okay. all the money out of your bank account and then imprison you. All by the way that you treat each other. Yeah, so I vote. Turns, for, I vote for that. It turns everybody into Stepford wives, though. Yeah, but it's oh, so bad because like everyone is so fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone is so, but, because they don't. But that was too real. Because like that's mm-hmm. the thing with a Black Mirror. That it's not like some distant future. It's nope. just like. Five years from now, right? It's like, by the way, this Could is be. what you're living in. Exactly, yeah. and you're like, mm, I, don't I did like, like this. the teddy bear one. That one was not very realistic. It anyway. felt yeah. like a revamp of like, uh, kind of like Tales from the Crypt or Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, yeah, Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone. Yeah, Twilight sure. Zone's what I yeah. meant. Twilight yeah. Zone's what I meant. I love Tales from the Crypt. As a kid. Tales from the Crypt is also really good. Yeah, remember the one? Oh, okay, we'll move on. I'm sorry. Yep. Remember the Tales from the Crypt where they're the ice cream driver and his. Uh, his conjoined twin dies, and like oh, he just drives I around, he sees ice cream, and he has a curtain over him. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you guys want? Can we play a game? Yeah, we're gonna play a game. We're Let's gonna play a game. So I have a phone somewhere that I'm gonna read something off of. I had a phone in once in my life. There it is. Nope, oh. it's back here because it was vibrating. Okay, so I took your idea and I mixed it up a little oh, bit. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm excited about this. Yeah, um, basically, I'm gonna read. You guys are gonna compete against each other. Awesome. I, you two. Okay. I am gonna read some lyrics to a song, uh, like spoken word, if you will. Okay. And you guys have to try to figure out what song it is. Oh, the name of the okay. song. Well, okay. name of the song. Okay. Oh, look. We'll, 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 so, we'll see how that Brady, goes. Brady, I gonna, wish that our viewers could see If it's a Libyan Brady's pop star, so... I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> it better not be. Okay. One of them's I only far. know a couple. Okay. Does Libya have pop stars? They do. Do they do? Yeah, there's a couple. Everybody has pop <laughs> stars. There's a couple. Okay, good. Okay. I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask me. I'll never tell. Call me maybe. Call me Ray Jepsen. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, sit down. It, uh, just sit down. Yeah. Just I up. read these to Randall, and he didn't know, so I didn't think you guys would know. I also has a knew. wife and four kids. Um, you're... and my band covered that. For like, <laughs> my band covered that song ah, for I a never, half a minute. Yeah, I don't know the lyrics to that song. I just know the song, and it's like, I didn't know. Call me maybe. I just. Met I you. wasn't gonna this pull out the, the call me maybe. Okay, here we go. Call me maybe. Yeah, I think mine is a little <laughs> tougher because I'm boys. pretty sure he doesn't cover it. You might know it. Okay. Oh, this you're doing is, another one. Okay. We're doing three. Three. Okay. Got it. Okay. I look and stare so deep in your eyes. I touch on you more and more every time. When you leave, I'm begging not to let you go. Mm. Call your name two or three times in a row. Such a funny thing for me to try to explain how I'm feeling and my pride is the one to blame. Because I know I don't understand just how your love can do what no one else can. I don't. I don't know this. I try to read it like so. It's not like I know. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> it would be so funny if this like a trap song <laughs> <laughs> or like mumble rap. I'm gonna something. give you guys a second because I'm gonna pull it up because I didn't think about this earlier. It will be nice to play it. So you guys are gonna be like, oh, I know what that is. Oh. Um, just mull over. I'm drawing a blank on this one. Drawing a blank. Drawing a blank. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> so upset. I'm so mad at myself. So on this definitely. last one, no. Amanda had me pull it up because she wanted me to choose a song. So I did. Now Sorry. in my <laughs> eyes, this is a very popular song. Okay. And I thought about it when we were pulling up and I'm like, this one might be a little obscure. You didn't put the uh the name of it on. No, I didn't. So just read it so and then I I'll can, do the reveal. Well then I can participate. Yes. Okay. I can read it if you guys No, want. I would prefer okay. to read it. Okay. <laughs> now I've been happy. Okay, hold on, let me try again. Now I've been happy lately, thinking about the good things to come. And I believe it could be something good has begun. Oh, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world as one. <laughs> and I believe it could be someday it's going to come. I have no idea. Want me to do it one more time? Yeah, read it again, please. Now I've been happy lately, this up. thinking about the good things to okay, come, okay. and I believe it could be something good has begun. Oh, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world as one, and I believe it could be someday, someday it's going to come. No, no idea. Just, yeah, I don't, is that too You look Swift? disgusted by it. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Beatles? No, you're closest out of the two. Rolling Stones? Have, no, farther. Jefferson Airplane? I don't know. <laughs> Oddly closer. This is Cat Stevens. Oh. oh. Peace Train Sorry, by Cat Stevens. Oh, that's a little on the obscure was, side. Uh, I feel like I should try another one just to make that fair for you guys. I like, thought that was a well-known song. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, a well-known song. Something that we haven't told our viewers yet, real quick side note, is that uh, it doesn't surprise me that Randall picked Cat Stevens when his mom is in a Fleetwood Mac cover band. That's true. Uh, Your mom's in a Fleetwood Mac? I'll show you her picture. Is it Gold Dust Woman? Uh, it is actually not is, that. Is that the there band? are a lot of them that yeah. are called Gold Dust Woman? The okay. one that she is in is kind of familiar with the uh, with uh, that cover band. Well, there's a local one here in Vancouver. Oh, she lives in, in Portland. Portland. Yeah, she's in Orange County. Probably not the same one. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> she looks like Stevie Nicks, and oh, uh, cool. Randall was raised by the White Witch. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> is that what that what they call her? The White Witch? Is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I just saw another one that would probably work pretty well. If you want me to try another. Let's try one more. Okay. I feel like that one wasn't fair. Okay, and then we'll move on. Let's see. We still got time. All right. This one is <laughs> according to the hourglass. We're okay. <laughs> we're all right. This one's pretty uh pretty popular. Okay. So. Okay. If you say let's so. Do that. <laughs> now, if you're feeling kind of low about the dues you've been paying, future is coming much too slow, and you want to run, but somehow you just keep on staying. Can't decide which way to go. Should I stay or should I go now? No. Yeah, that was a good guess. Yeah. B, where's my money? No. <laughs> <laughs> I understand That's the one you done. <laughs> about indecision, but I don't care if I get behind. People living in competition. All I want. Uh, for, uh Boston. It's a Boston have song. My peace of mind. It's oh, uh, more than a feeling. No, it's, more yes, than it's called a peace feeling. of mind. Oh yeah, Boston. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Okay, so uh, moving on. Let's go deep. 
Okay, Mohanad, are you ready to go deep? Yeah, always. We have a segment called... <laughs> go- we- <laughs> Perfect. He's so ready. I love that. I like, good job. <laughs> he's, he's, I like it. Uh, we have a segment called Going Deep. It's a thought-provoking uh, scenario, question, oh. or situation okay. that we want you to put yourself into and think, you know, what would you do? How would you handle it? And this is an ongoing argument that I've had with uh, a f- friend of mine since about sixth grade. <laughs> Um, so if you could settle we, this. We take differing <laughs> sides of this, of this Absolutely. hypothetical fake scenario that doesn't actually exist and could never exist. But if it did. This could exist. It could in some kind of weird Hunger Games type of uh, scenario, uh, world situation. <laughs> um, okay. So you are in a high school mm-hmm. gym, basketball mm-hmm. court. Uh, the bleachers are there, right? Mm-hmm. Also in the high school gym is a full-size alligator. Okay. Maybe 12 feet long. Just a, you know, an alligator. Big alligator. Okay. You are armed with a pocket knife and that's it. And you cannot leave until the alligator is dead. You must kill the alligator. Can you do it? Would you be able to, in that situation, one-on-one against an alligator? Now, I'll tell you, the reason why I chose an alligator in sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Was because an alligator is not naturally aggressive unless you get close to it. So you always have the element of surprise. Well, of course. So right. my argument was, I'll tell you my position. Mm-hmm. You can think about your position. My 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 argument was, absolutely, I win. Pocket knife him in the eye, jump on his back, I'm out of there. Jump on his back, right? Jump on his but back. if he rolls you, then you're screwed. That was my friend's argument mm-hmm. who said, you're insane and that alligator is going to kill you. But on land, it would probably be better. Well, you're in land. You're yeah. on, and you have bleachers. So you can hide. And like you can get like a little knife stab in and run away. So anyway, how do you feel about that, Mohan? You well, against an alligator armed with a pocket knife. No, the the first thing that came to my mind was just to poke him in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, I feel like I can definitely do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, That's like, my guy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because and I I feel like that would happen if you go to school in Florida. Like, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's yeah. definitely kids out there who've like been like, "That's totally possible." Like, yeah, totally exactly. I feel like if you get someone from there, like, yeah, you mean the three I've killed before? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Well, right. well, right. there was a gentleman. I was on a different podcast uh, called Stupid Criminals. What was the name of that podcast I was on? Dumb and Busted. Dumb and Busted. Mm. And I had to pick a story that happened recently uh, where it was a dumb criminal. And the one I chose was a guy in Florida wearing Crocs, funny enough, hmm. snuck into an alligator uh, and crocodile farm. Preserve? Yeah. Preserve? Nope, that's not. Preserve. 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 <laughs> preserve would be a jam <laughs> yeah, of some sort. Yeah. Like alligator, <laughs> alligator <laughs> jam. They make, jam. They make jams out of them. Great right with almond butter. <laughs> uh, no, he sneaks in and he's so... Sh- shit house like he ends up raiding the bar first because it's like a it's a facility you go to hang out and kids get to look at alligators well they had yeah. a bar he ransacked the bar and then somehow ended up in the crocodile the like the main big daddy crocodile uh and the crocodile bit down on his leg and he bit it off or he beat it off with a frozen armadillo uh there was like a frozen armadillo like for them to yeah. chew on, oh, laying in there, just yeah. lying around, bobbing around. Right. So he beats it off with that, and then he ends up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, I know. Moving forward, the, we're gonna. The first move time forward. you said it, we could get past it. <laughs> the second time, <laughs> Randall can't he handle that. No, no, I can handle it because she broke. Right. Okay. <laughs> I was fine. He, so he defended himself with the frozen armadillo. <laughs> we're in the sixth grade, <laughs> anyway, uh, and he crawls up a 18 foot pole and gets arrested and that's uh that that was a guy that, that human lives like he went in so he was able to protect himself with a with a frozen armadillo and if he can do it certainly muhammad and me yeah can do it too yeah i think that's I my can point. Do it. i'm pretty sturdy i think you yeah. can win against animals in general like with the right equipment yeah. so hey I nathan would, yeah. nathan peterson and ryan dunford if you're listening Screw you guys. I'm right. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I, I win. I used to argue with the vets at the clinic when I when I was working in veterinary that I would wrestle a big dog over a cat any day because when cats would attack your arm, there's so many sharp and they bunny kick and it hurts so bad and their teeth are sharp and their nails are sharp. But a dog, I could you can arm wrestle. You could like you know headlock yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if they bite you, that's real rough too. Yeah. So. 
Just don't wrestle animals. You see something? <laughs> I feel like an animal that was something like like more aggressive, like would definitely like a kill cat. me. Like a cat, like a big cat, like a cougar or something yeah. like that. Oh, oh, that would be horrible. Yeah. The pocket knife, no, I'm done. <laughs> I, I, I would concede that. But an alligator that would just like be sitting there, I just bide my time, think about it, and then uh, and then muscle the strength, the, the the nerve to do it, and then I'd stab him in the eye, and then uh, when he couldn't see, then I would like flip him over, and then I think I'd have a better the... chance against a bear than I would a cougar. What yeah. makes you I don't think that bears are so think. fast? Though. They are fast. And what so kind of bear? Too? They're like the strongest animal you could possibly. And wrestle. They they're not as fast trees. as a cougar, though. No, but they're strong. They're stronger. They but weigh more. What do you? What do you? Expect they only have to two accomplish? hands. They don't bunny kick you like like a a cougar will grab you by the throat and then eviscerate you with its back feet. Right. That's yeah, how they a, kill a you bear while will eating just your, swipe you while once. eating your face. But if you swipe me once, maybe you don't get a good hit, and then I run. All right, I've watched the Revenant. I have too. I think yeah. a bear would just rip your arms off, and then you just yeah. Don't Ooh, have, arms. have you guys watched Grizzly Man? Yes. That's a rough ending. That guy <laughs> had it coming. Different bears in spring. Have you seen Grizzly Man? No, I haven't. It's about an actor from LA that goes and lives in the look on your face right now. I wish our viewers could see it. You're they like, can. nope. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> if they go to YouTube, um, this guy is an actor from LA and he goes to Alaska and he he does make friends with a fox. He like has this pet fox that follows him around, which was really cool. And then he has a he makes friends with the bears and he gets well, he thinks he's a grizzly whisperer, yeah. Oh, and he gets very oh. close with them and he and, like, documents the whole thing. The thing. People who think that they can talk to animals, like if you can see me right now, <laughs> you can't stop. You can't stop. Yeah. Well, you can talk to certain groups of them, but then you try to fly out, you bring your girlfriend with you, and you're like, by the way, I've made friends with all these bears. And he was, he was like laying with the bears and rolling around for with them. years, like a decade. Yeah. But he only went during these certain three months every year. I see. So it was yeah. the same bears. But then him and his girlfriend try to fly out. They miss their plane. They go back thinking it's the same bears. No, these are springtime bears, and you're in their neighborhood, and they ate them. Yeah, those yeah. are bears on sure. spring yeah, break. Yeah, these are like, <laughs> wintertime bears are gone, yo. These yeah. are springtime bears yeah, are here. We don't say, care uh, for humans. It's a Werner yeah. Herzog movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and yeah. there was a sad interview when he was on da the David Letterman show, and Letterman said something along the lines of, now, I'm not going to like read a headline in the next like couple of years that you uh, got eaten by a grizzly, am I? And he was like, no, 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 it's not like that. People misunderstand. And then, like, sure enough, like, a few years later, he totally well, I mean, is it really yeah. that big of a surprise, though? Not, not to me. <laughs> this is how I feel about that uh, Australian guy, too, who got... Uh, Don't you even talk bad about yeah. Steve Irwin. No, America's I'm not, not, not going to talk bad about him. But, like, every, every like, how interview... Dare you? Every interview or something, like, you're not going to die. And he's like, no. And I'm like, mm, you're going to die. The, the way that he died was so sad, though. He got yeah. he threw the heart with a stingray. Yeah. Like, you've been wrestling it, crocodiles? It was, it was like threading a needle. It was like such a, it, yeah. it's a million to one shot. Yeah. And he got it. Stingray's like, not today. You've been messing with my cousins, the crocodiles. <laughs> yeah. Not on my watch. Yeah, that was the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the stingray was the hitman. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But I will <laughs> never fight a bear. No, I would yeah, never find that good. Winnie the Pooh. Have you guys heard Bert Kreischer's whole bit about him wrestling like the bear? No. It's a true story. He was on some show and they wanted him to wrestle a bear and it was like a movie bear. Like this is oh, a yeah, movie yeah, bear. Yeah, it's a movie bear. It's not real like a he's train, a real bear. A train bear. Trained bear. Yeah, okay. And God, I haven't watched this in a while, but basically he gets there and oh he has marshmallows. The trainer's like, Okay, if he starts coming at you. You're going to stick all these marshmallows in your mouth and you're going to open your mouth and let the bear take them out of your mouth. And that shows that you're docile. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Long story I will do no such thing. Long story short, the bear gets pissed for some reason, ends up sitting on Bert with like his crotch in his face. <laughs> and right. uh, Bert's wife was the one that was like, marshmallows? You want marshmallows? And he's like, that's when I knew I was going to marry her. <laughs> like, uh, that's great. You should Google uh Bert Kreischer bear. It'll come right oh, up. Okay. It's really funny. Yeah. 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 I'm interested. Yeah. yeah. Do you have I dates coming up? Are you working at uh, Helium or Harvey's? Any local stuff or uh, national stuff? Yeah. 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 Um, I have a few shows coming up. Uh, I'm doing uh, You're Welcome on uh, January 2nd. January 2nd. I'll be there with you. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. This Wednesday, you guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm also going to uh, Texas. Oh, are you, are you doing Cap City? Yeah, yeah I'm doing yeah. Cap City. Yeah, yeah. Is that a festival? For? Uh, Joe DeRosa. Oh, oh it's, nice. Uh, yeah. I've been trying. Yeah, I'm. I will be going there sometime in the next like six months. I've been working yeah. on it, but yeah, 
I, so yes, from between the 16th to the, the 20th. Awesome. I'm going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Camp City yeah. is a, it's a really cool club and it's famous, Yeah. Uh, but it's in a strip mall. It's in the back of a strip mall. Oh. It's oh. really uh, underwhelming when you like, when you're like, oh, this can be this big club and you picture like, you know, LA and stuff. Or Where in know? Texas? Uh, it's in city? Austin. Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Honestly, really that's kind of really how excited. I felt about Helium here. Oh, really? When I first got, well, because it's like. It, it looks like a youth group church when you're first going. Oh, yeah, sure. It's an old uh, Masonic uh, Mason's place. Is that what I think. it is? It was a ballroom. It was a Mason's place. Oh. It was been a few different things. Yeah, I feel the same about a lot of clubs, though. Like, oh, yeah. When you, when you, when you walk, because like, like when you see them in videos or something, you only see the backdrop behind like the performer. Right. Yeah. Make right. it look so big. And, and then the parlor. Was, and- exactly. And then you're like, oh, it's just like a small wall. Yeah. And right. Everything there is just different. You're like, oh, this is not what I expected. The parlor is known for like their backdrop they put behind you with your name on it and it's okay. all flashy and lights. And I was like, I want to do the parlor when I started. It's in a mall. Yeah. You it, it, it's like in like if you were to go to what's the mall downtown? Uh Pioneer Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks yeah. like Pioneer oh, Square. Cool. And I also didn't know that whatever I'm going to I haven't worked there in a long time. Uh, I paid $21 for a sugar-free Red Bull and vodka. Uh, Whoa. Wow. One, and it wasn't even like a pounder. It was yeah, it's in Bellevue, which I mm, didn't know is that like the like a lot of money for something that is not worth it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. could buy almost a fifth of Tito's for that. Yeah. But it was, uh, it's in Bellevue, which I guess is kind of like the uh, Beverly Hills of, of Washington. Bellevue is super nice. Yeah. Bellevue is super nice. Yeah. Have you traveled a lot in the United States since being here? Have you been yeah. to Texas before? Have you? I have not been to Texas. Texas mm-hmm. is, <laughs> yeah. The one that got away for yeah, you. Yeah, it's going to be the first time. Okay. I'm gonna You're going to be a lone there. star. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Austin no, is, is going to be nice. Can I ask yeah. you what made you settle on Portland? Well, what, what, like, or did you have a lot of choice, or did no? What brought you to no, this area I, specifically? It was the address his mom pinned to his lapel. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, "Good luck." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. sorry. It, it, okay. it was. It was more like a Moses scenario. Where she put me in the Yeah, I just got picked by someone at Threw the, you in the Pacific River. Ocean. You're like, this boat sucks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, it was three days. All these people uh, tried to save you, and you're like, I don't like people and then, and then I was like is this Egypt and yeah. someone was like this is the Willamette <laughs> you're like I thought it smelled like hipsters this is weird <laughs> somebody take me a food cart uh, go ahead sorry no uh, cause, cause when I first came here it was through an exchange program okay uh, through like the Department of State so uh, they uh, it took place at Portland State University got it uh, so yeah they picked it for me before that I've heard of Oregon but never of Portland Okay. Yeah. So until like <laughs> I came here, that's when like before like I knew I was coming to Portland. That's when I looked it up and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. As a kid growing it's up, it's a cool place to land. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's, but you, you're yeah. young and Absolutely, like, because yeah. you were like 21 or 22 or something like that. 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're young and it's a great city. Yeah, yeah. it is a yeah. really great city. Yeah. Um, what like as far and sorry to talk about you being from somewhere else so much, but we have never been anywhere cool. Uh, what cities were you familiar with growing up there? New York and Los Angeles. That's about it. New York, L.A., and New Orleans for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I know New the Orleans, reason. I would say because Las Vegas. It, it was yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially from that show, uh, Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, New Orleans, I think, because there was a lot of coverage after like the uh, Hurricane Katrina. Oh yeah. So there was yeah. like a lot of about, about it. Uh, but yeah, mainly L.A. San Francisco as well, like like really like big, big cities. cities. So that's why we were like coming to Portland. It felt like very different from because like you were just like you like your introduction to like what the U.S. looks like is through movies and they only film in specific places. Yeah. Uh, so Portland was like ah, this is like not something I've seen before. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah. Cool. You're like it is green. <laughs> oh, that was like my first thought because I came here and it was uh, June, so it was like. So like super green. Our it wasn't rainy best time of year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you are from Benghazi, which is yeah. a, it's a coastal city, right? It is a coastal city. Yeah. Are there good beaches? Oh, is, the is beaches it like beautiful? Are, it's beautiful. It's right in the Mediterranean. Right? Yeah, the beaches are like so amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Tripoli is kind of on the coast, coastal yeah. too. So it is on the I've, coast. I've too. seen yeah. pictures, and and uh, I told them Tripoli is a place on my bucket list, but I don't know. Where if is no fly now? Go. I mean, what's the closest you can get to Libya flying Tunisia. now? You, ha- you can still... I'm sorry, go ahead. So so f- you mean flying? Yeah, to- flying in. Because I know things are shut down. Like as far yeah. as... Yeah. You can't... 
You can go to Tunisia. That's like the closest country okay. that you can like fly to uh, from like the US. And it's on the borders of Libya. So you can yeah. like just uh, like two hours car ride and you're like in Tripoli. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, can I plug um, something? Yeah. My band has a gig. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, Jan- Ready on stage. Ready January on stage. January 11th. <laughs> My band, The Playlist. John Ralphio over here. <laughs> <laughs> my band is the worst. Um, uh, my band is playing on January 11th at the Brick House in Vancouver. It has delicious food. I have to fight not being like, Brick House. We play that song. I know. We learned it. so that You're we actually it. a great man. You're a very talented oh, thank musician. You. Thank you. We are. It's a good band. We have a lot of fun. There's six of us and we play a lot of different cover songs. Only cover songs that you would all recognize, like super good stuff. Uh, not like uh, not like Randall's crappy Cat Stevens songs. Yeah, wait, big, f- oh, <laughs> big, big clean big, podcast, big, clean not, podcast, not clean peace, podcast. <laughs> not Peace Train by Cat Stevens. Oh, <laughs> it's it's way God. better. It's like slightly better than yeah, that. Yeah, like that was like um, a music for nine nerds. to midnight on January 11th. <laughs> Not the worst. Be there. You're all invited. Where is it again? Brick House Brick in House. downtown Vancouver. At uh, what time? Nine to midnight. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a really cool. Stage really cool. There's like a dance floor. We play dancing music. I had a great time when I came and saw you. Delicious nachos. They have drinks. They have good wine. I've been told. Yep. Yes. And please come. Yeah. It's awesome. I will be. Uh, I'm co-headlining Harvey's Comedy Club downtown Portland. This was uh, my plug. January 10th You're through the 13th. You're stealing my plug. Why are you doing this? <laughs> the right, viewers are going to forget to come to my gig, and they're going to go to your Harvey's thing. I will be at Brady's show. You should go see Brady's band. I was really super oh, impressed. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. I you guys check out T for the Tillerman. It's Cat Stevens' best album. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Why did we give him a mic? I don't know. That was your choice. <laughs> I know. I believe you, you I fought know. for that. I did. Yeah. You know, you feed the cat on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't feed the animals. Yeah, you don't, don't feed the they, they don't feed you don't feed the wildlife. Don't feed the Randalls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll Mohana, thank you for time. coming on tonight. Thank you so much. That was super absolutely. Fun. Thanks so much. It was yeah, so good yeah. to meet you and yeah, talk with you. Yeah. Where can they find unprotected sets? On Epix, uh, and you can start a free trial for two weeks and just watch my episode because mm-hmm. that's and what I did. And <laughs> that's what he's supposed to say. I had to pay. I had to, <laughs> it's an extra five bucks a month on my cable bill, so I just got it, watched it, and then I canceled it. Or keep it so Mahana can still do stuff on their channel. But, <laughs> oh yeah, right. uh, so never cancel it. Keep it forever. <laughs> keep it forever. Epix is what I watch. Netflix is done. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you give me a special. Uh, <laughs> I will go on anything that will give me a special too, exactly. so I get it. <laughs> exactly. Right now the stand-up diet is the best. OPB gave me right. a comedy special. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You guys have a good night. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, secret word. Oh, secret, secret word. word. We get to do... let him pick it. Oh, you want to pick? Oh, so we do a secret word mm-hmm. that our guests will win five hundred dollars of free dentistry at my dental office. Any word? Any Something word. that came up during the show, or oh, should I say the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should say the word. Okay, word. Yeah, see, that's what I thought too. Yeah, it's a so secret what, word. Yeah. So I thought they had so to the guess viewer, something. So the viewer, the listener, will email us the secret word that you choose, and the first oh. person to do it gets five hundred dollars in free dentistry. Okay. My secret word is gonna be uh, thank you next. Thank you next. Yeah. Thank you next. So it's three words. So it could be a phrase. Phrase. That's allowed. Yeah. Thank you, comma next. Thank Thank Got you, it. comma next. Thank you, comma next. So find the. Uh, so email find that. the comma. At stand-up, <laughs> the standup diet at gmail dot com. Email no that. No money, no comma. <laughs> no comma, no money. I just want to. You got it. Okay, now, bye. Peace out. <laughs>